In this video, I'll teach you what Lerp is, how it works, and why it should be a vital tool in your game dev toolkit. Let's get into it. Okay, so to get started, let's create a script and call it Lerper, or whatever you'd like to call it. It will function the same. Okay, so before we actually start lerping stuff, let's learn what lerp does. And I'm just going to do that in uh, JavaScript because it will be super easy for me to show you. So given two points, let's say a is equal to zero and b is equal to 10. We would like to find a percentage value between these two numbers. So let's say we want to find 40% of the way to 10. So we can do that with our t for time. And let's just make this 0.4. So we want to find the 40% between 0 and 10. Now, uh, you don't need to know the maths about, about how Lerp works. You kind of just need to know like what it does because Unity makes it very easy. But I'm just going to glance over the maths right now. So let's say our point, the 40% point, the point is going to be, and this is the formula for Lerp, uh, it's 1 minus t. So if, if t maximum is 1 and we've given it 0.4, the remainder here will be 0.6 times r a plus time multiplied by b. Now if we console log out our point here, whoops, that's not what I wanted, you'll see that it is 4. So that is 40% of the way between 0 and 10. And if we change this to say 3 or 0.33, uh, it will give us the exact 30% um, of the way between these numbers and we can give it something obscure, a little bit more tricky, uh, see if the computer can keep up, which it can easily obviously. Um, so as I said, you don't need to know the maths behind how Lerp works, you just need to know what it's trying to do. Finding a point between two numbers, Unity makes it super easy to use, uh, which I'll show you right now. Unity makes it much, much easier. So look, uh, this, let's make a little variable here called my value. And we just call lerp by math, mathf.lerp. It's asking for us for a, b, and t. So our start, our goal, and our time variable. So let's say zero and 10, and then uh, let's say the 0.5. And that will return five, as that is 50% of the way between zero and 10. So that's how Lerp works, and Unity gives us a bunch of other methods and ways to use Lerp, but perform different tasks. So let's say we've got two floats here. Let's call this one our current and our target. And let's say no matter what target is, we always want the our current variable to slowly work towards becoming target. Okay, so if we set target to 10, we want current to slowly work its way up to 10 or down if it's higher. Unity gives us a really easy way to do that. In our update function, we can say current is equal to mathf.move towards. Now this is using Lerp at its core, but instead of giving it a direct t value here, we will be giving it a speed. So for this to work, we need to give it um, what it is currently. So our current, we're going to say we want to move towards our target value, whatever it is. And then we need a speed variable here. So let's create a serialized field so we can see it in the inspector. Whoops. And let's call this speed, make it equal to something like 0 0.5. And then we'll say speed times time dot delta time. Very cool. And we need a way to actually change our target speed or else they're both just gonna sit at zero. So we'll say if, whoops, input dot get mouse down, left click, and we'll set our target is equal to, we'll say if our target is currently equal to zero, then let's set it to one. Otherwise let's set it to zero. And then just to illustrate this, let's debug log our current variable. Okay, head back into Unity and let's attach our script to our cube or our sphere or whatever you're using. And uh, let's press play. And you'll see zero. If I click, it will slowly work its way to one. And then if I click again, it will slowly uh, lerp its way back down. Excellent. So we've got this number now that we can control from zero to one in a nice smooth manner. So let's actually do something with it. Let's say transform dot position is equal to, and we will need a serialized field here, private. Whoa, what is that? Vector three. 
and this will be our goal position. Holy moly, my typing. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to move our object from its current position to a goal position and then we can uh, ping pong back and forth. And Unity gives us a nice little lerp function here called vector3 lerp and this is to lerp vector3s uh, as the name suggests. So just the same as we've got our lerp here, we're going to give it the start position, the end position and then the t variable. So our start position is going to be zero because that is where my shape is on the on the uh, on my transform, and the goal will be the goal position, and the t will be current. Okay, because we just made that here. So let's try that, and let's set our goal position to eighteen, and let's go. And there you go. You're lerping back and forth on mouse, on mouse click. Very cool. Uh, but we can actually jazz that up a little bit. So that is very linear. There's no, there's no ease to it at all. So we can add one. Let's go to serialize field, private. Oh my golly, that thing keeps showing its face. Animation curve, curve. And just in case you haven't seen that, I'll show you what that looks like in Unity. So now on your shape, you'll see you've got this curve variable here. And this is what we were using. So a very linear path from zero to one. Unity provides us these basic ones, like this is like a slow ease in and an ease out. So each, our shape could go a little bit slower, speed up, and then slow towards the end. And you can also add little points and make something crazy as well, which you should experiment with, but I'm just gonna use ease in and out. And now, instead of just setting our, our time directly to current, we can actually use our curve here. So curve, dot evaluate, and then we'll send in current. So this will still go from zero to one, but depending on where our curve is, like what it's doing on the curve, it's going to be performing um, a faster or slower action, if that makes sense. So let's press play, and you'll see that it speeds up and slows down. A little bit more style and pizzazz to it. Uh, we can do more. Let's uh, rotate it on its way. So transform dot rotation is equal to, and just the same way that we did this with vector three, let's do this with quaternions. So it requires a, b, and t. So let's create a new variable, serialize field privates, and I'm going to use vectors as it's easier. Rotation goal. So our start one will be quaternion Euler. Uh, zero because that's what we're starting as I believe yes and the goal will be quaternion Euler goal rotation and uh, we can do current here but as we already set up this curve let's use that because that will look a little bit sexier back into unity um, and the goal should be something like let's see Ooh. Okay, yeah, so about 180 on the X. Give it a little bit of spinnies. And that didn't work because all I did was set it there because I'm silly. Let me just set it here. Let's go. There we go. Spins. Cool bananas. Okay, so let's add a scale to this as the last little exercise. So we'll do transform scale equals, and as it's a vector, we can just do vector three lerp. And we are, our start will be, I believe, one, yeah, one. And our goal will be whatever the hell we want it to be. So we will serialize our field and let's make this a float and this will be the uh, goal scale. Let's default this to two, so it will double in size. So then we'll do one here times uh, goal scale. Goal scale, scale goal would have probably been better. And then let's use our little curve here, like that. And let's try that out. Yes, very nice. Uh, but it would probably be better if it kind of got bigger in the middle and then went back down to its normal size. So let's do that. Um, evaluate curve. So instead of it going from zero to one, let's make it go to zero to five and then return its way back down to uh, zero again. So we'll ping pong it. And uh, Unity actually provides a function called mathf.pingpong. 
and let's send in our current for t and then length let's make it 0.5 so now that will go up to 5 and then it will wrap and go back down again let's try that yes that is all right but it's not actually getting to our scale goal because uh, we're basically dividing it by five. So let's uh, multiply that by two. And let's see how that goes. Beautiful. How's that? It's very nice. So I hope you learned something. I hope that was fun to watch. If it was, leave a like, uh, maybe comment, tell me what you want to say next. And uh, I will see you in the next episode. Yeah.